All right, everyone. Are you guys ready? I don't know what we're doing, but are you ready? <laughs> uh, well, hello. My name is Lance Goyke. Uh, Adam and I had a lot of class together years and years and years ago. Um, I have been training people since fall of 2010 when I did an internship at a gym in Fishers called Indianapolis Fitness and Sports Training. Um, it's a private gym. It's not like the uh, typical uh, lifetime fitness kind of big box gym. We don't have many machines. Um, we, we have physical therapy that we offer in the, in the facility. One of our owners is a physical therapist. Um, our two owners have written for men's health for like 15 years. Um, and I, I tell you all of this because it's brought a, a particular clientele. We don't get many just general walk-ins. We get a lot of people who are referrals. So somebody comes in and somebody has a good time with us and they say, oh my God, you have to meet Kelsey. Kelsey was the first name that came to my mind. You have to meet Kelsey. She had, you have to come in, you have to work with Lance or you have to whatever. Um, and that's, I mean, that's where our money comes from. That's how we subsist that. And, you know, we'll have people come in from uh, as far as Japan. Um, we have pretty frequently some two hour drives in for physical therapy um, and whatever. Does that kind of make sense? Any thumbs up, thumbs down? Head nod, head nod's good, okay. Uh, as far as my path, so my path is not really a, a clear cut kind of thing. So I don't just work at iFast. I also run my own website and run my own blog. And we have another, uh, we have another website where we make videos for coaches people like you and people ask us questions and we answer them so we'll do this this software that we're using right now I'll do a Q&A on this and I can record it and I can post that up on YouTube or whatever so that people can watch it forever and ever and ever so don't say anything that you don't want to be out there forever and ever and ever <laughs> that's mostly for me not for you um, so I, I can manage a website, I can write little blogs for my own thing. I have online training clients. Basically, they'll send me a couple videos and I'll take a look at them, see where some things pop up where I don't think they're really that awesome, uh, and then offer some cues. So sometimes I'll, I'll write those cues just with my keyboard if that doesn't work, usually that's what I'll try first because that's easiest. Uh, it's easiest to get that message out to them quickly as well. Um, if that doesn't work though, then I have to try something else. So either I'll say, how about you film another video from another angle so maybe I can give you a better cue or I'll, I'll break down my cue into more steps, more deliberate steps, more specific steps so that perhaps it makes a little bit more sense to them. And if worse comes to worse, I get the camera out and start filming, maybe just kind of talk through how I would suggest coaching through this exercise. So it's a lot similar um, to coaching in person by a show of hands. Has anybody coached somebody in person before? All right, all right. So it's similar, but it's definitely harder. Um, coaching in person is awesome because you can have this instant feedback and they can understand what you're, uh, what you're looking for right away, or if they've achieved what you're looking for right away. Whereas with this, I, I have to give different types of cues. So if I'm teaching someone how to deadlift, I might just in person, I might just say hips back and then squat down and that might work and it works pretty often honestly but in real person you're like hips back to where i'm already at the back of the wall i don't get it um or if i'm uh you know coaching any other thing i don't want you to lose your balance but your foot is rolling out so we got to keep your foot down and you're going to do that by kind of pushing your knee forward a little bit more 
So I have to give a little bit more of an explanation there. I do like online coaching because it's, it offers this flexibility that you don't get elsewhere. So I can coach in the office. I can coach at Hubbard and Cravens. I can coach while I'm on the road as long as I have the internet. So it's nice and it, it allows a lot of flexibility. The other nice part is I pay about 20 bucks a month for PayPal and so that they, so that PayPal will automatically rebuild them each month. And outside of that, I don't have any costs. So uh, very low overhead for starting up that business there. That's most of what I do just as an overview. Does anybody have any questions? They have questions. <laughs> What is the dropout rate for, the on, for people online? Is it high compared to people that you have face-to-face -face training with? I would say that it is not high. Um, the, my retention rate is higher, dropout rate is lower. So the, I think that is because of the expectation that I set up front. I'm very clear this costs $200 a month and I, you can cancel anytime. I just ask that you stick with it for at least three months. So, I, and I've had clients and I've had clients finish and stop going, but right now I have three clients and I've had them all for at least a year, um, which is, I mean, seems like a long time for me at least. <laughs> Anyone else? Did that answer your question, Eric? <coughs> okay, good. Um, let's see. So I'm looking at some, some bullets here you guys sent me. Developing a business model. So this uh, coaching is easy. Um, you just practice that a little bit and you're fine. Running a business and marketing yourself and your product and understanding who you want to work with and what it is that you're actually offering them, all of that is much more difficult, at least for me. Um, I like to read books though. Maybe you guys won't find it nearly as difficult. Um, the, one of the best things though about online coaching is that, you know, for me, I like, I'm really interested in a bunch of different things. I'm interested, I'm, I'm doing some web design programming stuff. I'm doing some coaching on the side. I'm learning how to write sales copy for ads, um, all sorts of stuff. And all of that is really interesting to me. And the only reason that that is something that I can afford to do is because it will pay off in the end. These are skills that apply to my job because I make my own job and I, I can just focus wherever I want. Um, if you're, if you're kind of that Renaissance man or woman dilettante and you like to look into some things, then it makes a lot of sense. I have to put a lot of focus now into finding different people. Biggest thing for me is referrals. Like I said, um, it's just, the way, at least for me, the way that I coach is kind of weird. Like I put a, a really strong emphasis on the anatomy and the science and the physiology kind of behind this. And it, it you know, it definitely depends on the person's goals. I've had a jujitsu fighter who really, really ate up the conditioning aspect of the programming. And he was just like, man, I've never, I've never felt more prepared. I didn't, I wasn't tired at any point during this. I'm just inexperienced and that's why I got third. <laughs> like this, that's awesome. I have some other people who say, you know, I've been lifting and I really want to lift, but I've never really felt very good doing it. So I was hoping I saw some of your articles. I have this, this popular article is called, you don't need to stretch. Sorry, no, it's called stop wasting your time. You don't need to stretch here's what to do instead. Um, and a lot of people really resonate with the message of that and, and in some of my methodology, even behind that. 
And that'll pull in a different type of clientele. So instead of a jujitsu fighter who needs conditioning or strength, it's, it's the guy who's worked out a bunch in the past, really enjoys it and just gets hurt every time he tries to push it a little bit harder. So I have to kind of think about how I'm going to market with that. For me, the primary thing is referrals and with blogs. So I network at events and I, I write a blog and hopefully somebody likes it. I try to send that out to a bunch of different people, make sure to post it on social media, even though I'm not very present on social media, I guess. Um, and, and most importantly to me, I think if you're putting something out there, just make sure it's helpful make sure it's you know thorough enough to accomplish whatever you're trying to accomplish like with that article what i wanted to show is i don't stretch that many people and i have some other ways that increase flexibility after just a couple breaths so it takes less than a minute for some people and i i just i think it's a really compelling way to show you that you don't need to stretch necessarily that's just an example. Um, I also like to do little case studies. It's a nice way to pump up your clients a little bit and then, you know, subtly tell them that, oh yeah, they're doing so great and I've been working with them. So maybe it's me, even though it's not me, it's never me. Um, we talked about uh, costs, startup maintenance and retention costs. I, I mean, when I started, I was just hand billing people by PayPal, but I hate asking for money. So $20 a month for PayPal monthly billing is totally worth it. Uh, consider that. There are other avenues to go about as well, um, depending on the, uh, the website you like to run. If you need more specifics, just holler at me. Um, maintenance wise, like I don't spend money on advertising because I don't know advertising and I'd just be wasting my money. Um, all I do is I, I try to invest my time as, as wise as I can. Does anybody have questions on business logistics? You guys just spout out your questions when they come to you, raise your hand. Um, I have a question about uh, your online training. Uh, what do you think some of the benefits are of online coaching rather than in-person coaching? Do you get a lot of questions like if I'm going to pay for a trainer, I want them to be there with me while I'm doing it? Or what are the benefits of having online coaching? Did you get that, Lance? Yes, yes. Uh, benefits of online training versus in-person training. So the, the main benefit is that I can reach anybody. I could work with you guys right now. I could give you guys a lecture at Franklin College and not have to leave my house, you know? Like this is, this is really convenient for even both of us. So we don't have to orchestrate schedules. I don't have to worry if I need to take a vacation that you're not getting your training in. You have become self-sufficient. You are autonom autonomic, you are, you are autonomous. Um, the, the nice thing about training people in person is that you can be there and you can push them whenever you need to. I'm not the type of person who is going to yell or even externally motivate anyone really that much. I am naturally an introvert and I find that doing those things is really exhausting. So what I do instead is I, I, I cue effectively and minimally and I expect a lot from people. We, we, you know, a, an interesting story to kind of relate that we have two broad different, we, just the broadest types of clientele at our gym. And in the morning, you're going to have, you have one coach and then in the evening you have the other coach and they are totally different. Our morning coach works with some um, older, maybe slower, less athletic, more out of shape clients. And our evening coach works primarily with 14 to 16 year old young athletes who will do anything he says. And they take these two just totally different approaches to training. And, and I tend to lean more towards the guy 
uh, at night because I find that the guy in the morning struggles a little bit with backlash. So he, and, you know, it's difficult to tell somebody who's older than you what to do as long as, you know, as long as they're not listening. <laughs> um, what I, what I do with my clients is I kind of pre-select these, these PM type clients, these people who will listen, these people who will go in the gym regardless. They just need kind of some guidance. They need some help. I had one client who is a, a sister of a friend and she needed to just get working out and she just lied to me the whole time. And I, I mean, I talked to her mom later on. She was like, she's never been to the gym. She hasn't cooked a damn thing. I don't know what's going on. So I, I found that to be pretty unsuccessful, but in, in pre-selecting the people that I work with, I've pre-selected results already because they're already highly motivated people. Um, the other main benefit that I don't think everyone would notice, but my, my clients are a little bit more cerebral where they're going to think through things and they like to do it sometimes to a fault. Um, I have a, a physical therapist in Denver who asked me for help coaching and he is like, we talk every science term that you could imagine. And it sounds probably disgusting to a lot of people, but <laughs> we, we can totally jive with that. And that's how he likes to see his coaching. He's like, well, okay, so if I have internal rotation on my right hip and I'm falling over too much and my, my foot's coming outward and I'm rolling to the outside of my foot, well, then I need to, I need to you know, pronate my right foot and shut off my right adductor or whatever. And we can go into those details. Um, I think those are all my thoughts. Does that kind of answer your question? What else? Um, so you mentioned that you expect a lot of your clients. How do you hold them accountable then if it's all online and they're not doing the gym? I tend to call people out on their stuff. Um, I have weekly check-ins. I ask them to initiate those check-ins. And if not, I'll kind of reach out a little bit more. All of my people, like it's never really been a problem. Like these three guys that I've had for the last year, it's never really been an issue. They always reach out to me. Um, if they're having some sort of backslide or whatever, they're like, they're, again, they're, they're highly motivated and they don't really need the accountability. Um, the biggest, I guess the biggest thing Here's two examples. I'm gonna forget the second one while I tell you the first one though. So here's one example. <laughs> I had a, or my, my uh, physical therapist guy in Denver wanted to put on some weight and he is just this skinny runner, Adam Heverin looking kind of dude. <laughs> and <Thanks, Lance. laughs> Adam's a lot bigger than he used to be, I'm kidding. Um, so, so our only goal for him was to like, he, he's eating pretty well. My only goal for him was to just add a, a relatively dense protein shake at one point during the day. So I have to look at things from a habit form perspective. How does this fit into his schedule? Is it even feasible? Does he have the right protein? Does he know what he's going to put in the shake? Is he going to drink it? Does he like the taste? Is he concerned about the taste? And then maybe we'll back off on it. So I start to float these ideas and we come up with a plan together. Do you have protein powder? Would you consider making shake? And then we talk through that and I say, well, I, I like to, I notice that habits form better if you do one kind of small thing every day. So it's always a little bit on your mind. Do you think you could have that shake in the morning? And he'll say, well, uh, usually probably not the morning because I, I have my routine already and then I get going. But after my workout, I think I could definitely put it in there. I was like, okay, so you're, you're super confident you could do that. And yeah, yeah, I could totally do that. It's like, perfect. All right. Now for the next seven days, I just want you to text me a picture of the shake that you're about to drink. And he did that a little bit and not that much, but 
I think what happened was he decided this isn't that terribly important to me. I, I feel okay about my weight. I am getting stronger still. And I'm content, I guess. So that might, I mean, that might be a method that I would do. Uh, weekly emails is another method to stay accountable with people. You can, I've tried, so I heard this creative idea once that you write a check, I'm talking to a client, right? So you wanna lose 20 pounds. Well, I want you to write me a check, not me a check. I want you to write the American Nazi party a check for $200 and give it to me. And if you don't accomplish your goal, or if you just, you, you fall off the wayside, you don't do your goals, I'm going to send that check in. So please don't make me do that. Uh, it's kind of funny, and I don't know that people really take it seriously, maybe because I've never sent that check in, maybe because I've never received that check, though. So I don't know. That's just that's just another idea, but I haven't found it to be particularly useful. I, I had a client that actually came to me with that idea once, and she wrote a check to the uh, Republican Party. <laughs> 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 she had her goal, so she didn't have to send it in, but yeah, it's... Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't make it. Um, what other questions do you guys have? Keep them coming. So what are some like long-term goals for your business? <clears throat> for my business? Uh, to make a little bit more money. I don't have many specific goals. I would like to hit 10 clients that I'm consistently training. Right now I only have three and I'm, I've been training people in person and I've been running this other website, um, which is my, I guess, primary source of income, not even this coaching. Um, I've had other clients in the past that maybe I could reactivate, reach out to them. Um, Ideally, though, I, I get to 10 monthly clients at $200 a month. That's a decent chunk of change that might pay rent in California somewhere. Um, and from there, I would just reevaluate. I don't have um, specific revenue goals or whatever. I just, it's easier for me to, oh, one thing that I run into is I try to juggle too many things, especially with this entrepreneurial mindset thing that's going on. So it's easy for me to get distracted. So in order to not get distracted, what I try to do is say, okay, well, let's just 10. 10 a nice round number. Let's do that. Anything else? Anyone? Uh, do you notice like a decline or increase in business during that? Increase in business during particular seasons? Or a decrease. Yeah. Or decrease. Well, no, I haven't. I, so I believe in statistics, and I think that a person, an N of one fluctuation out of an N of three is not really significant at all. So I, I don't look at it that way, especially with my type of clientele. Like You'll get the, the New Year's resolution crowd coming into a real gym or a, a physical gym. But these people, they're not looking for a, um, or at least not all of them are looking for a, I need some sort of external motivator. These people are generally looking for, I just want to do things the right way. So I think maybe that's an important point to kind of go into. Um, I don't try to compete on price, I try to compete in value. So I try to offer the maximum value so that I can charge the most amount of money and so that I can maximize the results that people get. I don't want to play in the, um, the cheaper, I guess, 10 bucks a month for programming kind of field because I don't believe in writing $10 programs, I guess. Who else? Do you see any, I know you are at, I don't know how many days you're at IFAST, but do you see fluctuations with that, that brick and mortar structure and the, the clientele, even though it's a private gym, 
during certain times of the year? Or is that pretty stable as well? We, we have that fluctuation. Um, I feel like it happens less so at iFast because uh, again, we're, we're pretty expensive relative to other gyms. So people who are just looking to get into a gym at January 1st aren't really looking to pay a whole lot. Um, the biggest fluctuation we'll see though is in high school athletes just when they're in season or out of season. Does money seem to be a limiting factor for 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 who? For someone wanting to try the online training or the in person, does money seem to be a limiting factor? Generally, yeah, I guess um, it depends on who I'm talking to. I have one guy in New York who's a, I think he's a trader, and he doesn't. He was like, oh, two hundred bucks a month, that's fine. Whereas if you told me 200 bucks a month, I'd be like, where am I going to get that money? <laughs> um, so it, you know, that, that's part of your marketing is you, you want to market to people who not only want you, but can also afford you. Do you decline a lot of applications to join your online program? And what is the interview process to get into? I have started to get into that. Um, hey, I could probably just screen share this. Let's see. Bear with me. During my XFIS class, I found out about Zoom from Lance. I used, uh, I used Zoom the other night to do an online review session with Lance. And it was, Did you? Yeah, it went really well. The really? That question is amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. So this is this is my website. That's a, a generous color of skin for me. I'm much more pale than that. Um, <laughs> so if we go to our, our coaching here, I just have a little testimonial, a little really brief introduction, and here is my application process. So I try to filter people based on what they're looking for. These are these these people, I just, I like working out, but I don't feel good when I work out. These are my athletes, and these are like my, uh, my physical therapist guy in Denver. They're, it's a professional. He can use this as a tax write-off, uh, and we, we talk about, you know, he, he calls it uh, fitness mentoring or something like that, <laughs> and that's, that's what gets him through tax season. Um, what was it, what was your original question? I felt like I had more to say. Um, what like how does the what is the application process? Is there an interview? Do you do like a interview on this? And you do you decline a bunch of people to join your program? So I don't necessarily decline, but I will tell you, I would decline if I had a bunch of people coming in and if I was doing a bunch of marketing. I will tell you that my primary people are these people, these, these red people here, these people who have been in pain. I had this, here's another good example. I have this other offering where I basically just do a, uh, a, a warm up kind of thing. Um, they'll send me the little assessment that I asked them for. It's a bunch of pictures and videos where they're moving around a little bit, kind of like a posture assessment, but also with some movement stuff. And I'll take them through it and I'll write them a little warm up based on the limitations that I see that are glaring. Um, and then from there, I, uh, I, I have to evaluate where they're at. So the people who, the reason I bring that up is the people who, think they have mobility problems are people who often just have pain issues and need to see someone else, someone who is not a CSCS, someone who is a physical therapist, in which case I try to tap into my network and find somewhere to refer them to because I don't really, I, I mean, I would never just say you need to go see some random physical therapist because I think that the profession there has, has left a lot to be desired. Um, I know 
a few really, really good people all around the world and they, they do a, they do a really good job and they do it a lot differently than traditional physical therapy. So it's not that I'll necessarily decline them. It's that I'm referring them out. If you, I mean, I had one guy specifically, I said, you, you should go get this. Um, and then when you're done, the next logical progression is to come from therapy where you're learning how to move again. And let's put on some, some training qualities, some strength, some uh, capillarization, some mitochondrial density on top of that. Good question, Eric. Give us one piece of advice, what would it be? What would it be like where you're at now? Hmm. I was not expecting a cliche question like that. <laughs> was that a burn? <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> um, if you want to be like me, just don't focus on any one thing and just keep trying a bunch of <laughs> crap. I don't know that you want to be like me, um, but uh, the biggest thing for me is, is to maintain a learner, a lifelong learner mindset. Um, so I'm, I'm always trying to better myself, not necessarily own more things, but have more um, career capital, have more skills in my tool belt to use. So that could be the assessment process. That could be a deeper understanding of physiology and biochemistry. We were just, you know, the other day I filmed a video about rowing from nine to 1230 in the morning. Um, we just, I mean, we like to discuss things and that's, I mean, work is kind of my life, but I like it that way. And I think that's a, it's a nice way to, you know, continue to push yourself because you continue to get practice. Um, I like reading books, even if they're not related to anatomy and physiology. I liked school, as Adam might know, I was in school, higher education school for nine years, and I only have two degrees. I'm not even a doctor. So <laughs> I just kept taking classes because I felt like I was getting stuff out of it. And now I know a little bit more organic chemistry and biochemistry and basic biology concepts that I can continue to refer back to. So as I build up this, this learner mindset, this, um, I guess, base of my intellectual pyramid that I can pull from, I can then start to go back to these basics and synthesize some new ideas and be a little bit more creative with some ideas. So if I understand the, the physics behind movement, I can coach any exercise. I don't have to have seen it before, but I can understand optimal joint levers and I can understand um, active versus passive insufficiency of muscles and, and contractile things and rate of force development. And I can understand how velocity of a movement will impact the amount of force that you can make and also impact the amount of power that you can make. So I can start to develop an athlete from a power mindset, which is really where athletics comes into play rather than just trying to get people stronger. Um, all of this just comes back to, I like learning different stuff. Hopefully that was insightful. <laughs> Yes. Um, sorry to offend you in front of all your friends. It happens every day. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody uh, have Lauren is my SI for exercise physiology, so. Oh, okay. Lauren was who asked the question, right? This is context clues? Okay. Uh, Hi, Lauren. <laughs> what else? What other? Uh, we'll probably, you know, maybe about... 10 more minutes or so, and Lance, if anything pops in your head that you want to share, just obviously blurt it out, but. Um, how often do you update your website? Ooh, man, you sound like my business manager. Um, <laughs> not very often. I update, here, let's do this screen share thing again. Bear with me. OK. 
Can you guys see that? Yep. We're back. You got my big face on the screen again. My other big face, I guess, because you were seeing that already. Um, so I update a website probably every day, but I work on a few different ones. So this one, my specific one, I haven't updated in quite a while and we can actually, uh, October 24th. Hey, that's not that bad. Um, and then before that, August, August 7th. Right there, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> We've been talking about that for like the last month, six weeks. Yes. So active and passive insufficiencies. This is yes. so this always comes up. Oh my goodness. Seriously. I have a whole article about this because I wanted to, um, Oh no, I remember why this happened. I have, hold on. Let me get my face off on the screen again, off the screen, on the screen. I don't know. So another offering that I have is I do, I've, I've done traditionally some teaching and some tutoring and some mentoring back at IUPUI. And so one of the offerings that I've started to offer is a, a weekly email or a weekly phone call. That's basically a tutoring session or some sort of, you could call it a mastermind group because that makes people think it's cooler, I guess. Um, I have a guy who just has a repository of questions and he's, uh, he just pays two every week because I told him two is probably enough for 10 bucks a week. Uh, and one of them, he needed, he, he wasn't understanding active versus passive insufficiencies. So I had to bring up that length tension relationship and we had to start, you know, talking about the physiology behind that. And I gave him some examples of why I think it's important if I, if I'm in a posture that keeps some muscles too long and some muscles too short, well then neither of them can contract really well. And so you, you won't get the force generation capability that you're looking for. Um, and that's just, you know, that's a way that all, that's one, that's another offering that I have, another way to pull in some income. Um, and two, it's a, it's a nice way for me to get my, I really enjoy teaching, so it's a nice way to get that experience in my day without, <laughs> I guess, cementing myself to the salary that a teacher would get. Sorry, Adam. What are you talking about? I live in a mansion. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I? Oh, websites. How often do you update? So I update this very, very sparsely, but... This one, I update twice a week and pretty often. So we just made a, this was the video that I said I was filming till 1230 in the morning. Um, and I was up last night till 1145 editing, edit everything. Um, I filmed all the, uh, filmed all the video, edited all the video, processed the audio. Um, wrote all this little sales copy, outlined everything for everyone, um, exported all these different videos. So, you know, if that's something you want to do, it's definitely an option. If you like teaching, like one of the big things I like about this website is it's, it's, you know, very teaching oriented. We have people from, the Philippines from California from all over the place who are watching this stuff and and they feel really excited about it and we had a guy from the Philippines the other night on our Q&A say I'm just so grateful that you guys are doing this because there's nobody like this in my country talking about any of this and it's really helpful and so you know moments like those are why we do what we do right cliche huh um and Here's just another website. So my buddies wrote a book. I think I convinced Adam to buy it. I have it. Yep. Um, I'm going to write a grant for the, uh, for the software too. Uh, uh, next year. Really? Yeah. With, with Jimware? Yeah. That's really cool. You guys should talk to Adam a lot more closely and not just in class. Um, Adam, I'm gonna sell you on this product right here in front of everyone. I know you weren't able to make it to the course, but I filmed it all and I edited it together 
and wrote all of this sales copy so you can read through it and see uh, what you might get from it. But, That's good. I'll, my wife will get it for me for Christmas and then I'll, um, I'll use it in advanced strength and conditioning in the spring. Actually, I think it would be really good for that. So you, oh, yeah. you, cause you read the book, right? You, you understand that it's not just, I feel like we're just hanging out while all your students are there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I read it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to utilize it a little more heavily in the, in the spring, but. So you guys, this, this book and this lecture that my friends gave, <coughs> It's basically from a, a sports performance lens, but they use, do, does anybody know what velocity based training is? Any, any, any hands? Okay, that, that seemed reluctant, but <laughs> we got one hand. Uh, so velocity based training. Um, traditionally, when you work out, you measure the weight that you put on the bar. And you use that to determine your, your changes, your training, your adaptation. With velocity-based training, instead of measuring the weight, you, you will modify the weight still, but you'll measure the speed at which someone moves. And you can, do th you can use that. There are special strength zones that say, okay, if I'm moving really slow, then I know it's this is a this is a strength weight and if i'm moving really fast then i know this is a purely speed based power kind of exercise and somewhere in the middle we have this gray area now it seems adam the point that i was going to make to you is like it seems like this is is totally related to just using special training technology but what you can do again, and this greatly illustrates my point from earlier, Lauren, you can take back some of the science that you've learned, and then you can start to think outside the box and you can apply different principles. So even if I don't have some sort of cool technology to measure how fast a bar is moving, I can still understand that faster means that I'm training different qualities. Some people have different shaped muscles and musculotendinous units. And those people will respond to exercise differently. If you have more, uh, more sarcomeres, more muscle sarcomeres in series, you are more likely to be able to contract quickly. You have a higher rate of force development. But if you have more sarcomeres in parallel, you have higher force output capabilities. And you can start to look at your, your athletes. And this one kind of looks like a gorilla. So he's probably going to really respond to working with heavier weights. And this dude is really springy and reminds me of a kangaroo. And he's going to start moving a lot quicker. Maybe we can load him a little bit more, give him what he doesn't need, and then push his, his capabilities up that way. So again, it, it's just you continue to come back to your basics. What what lens do you look at things through? And that's, that's what I'll constantly ask myself. Does anybody have, uh, somebody who hasn't asked a question yet, does anybody have a, one last question for Lance? Or Lance, do you have any closing remarks? <coughs> no. Anybody have a question? <laughs> Uh, what's the next uh, video that you'll post or like topic of blog that you'll write? Ooh. This uh, one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, yeah, it's probably going to be this one. Um, after that, I had, uh, I had a request from one of our interns to talk about different lunging patterns and the motions of the uh, pelvis bones and the sacrum. So I might talk about that and also had a request for talking about neck motion and how it reciprocally moves so that we can maintain a, a horizontal gaze forward while we move. We'll probably talk about that a little bit since I, I've written a nice long article about that, but maybe we can go into it a little bit deeper and a little bit more applicable to training in general. I don't uh, if you have time, send me the link to that uh, seminar. Uh, 
but I'll definitely look into it. Oh, for sure. I will. Thank, uh, thank you, Lance. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. Yeah. Can't believe you guys were awake. Uh, it is hard to believe sometimes. Uh, have a, uh, hey, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, Lance. Yeah, you too. Let's uh, hang out soon, though I'm leaving town in a week. <laughs> hey, well, we can do it over Zoom. Yeah, and, okay, uh, perfect. <laughs> just so you know, we, we, do, uh, we just got a Starbucks on campus uh, at the beginning of the semester, and uh, some, of the, some of the people on campus really enjoy their coffee. Uh, but Lance, if you ever want to know anything about coffee, he knows a lot about it. You make your own, right? Uh, yeah, generally, I do. Yeah. I don't yeah. like grow beans or anything, though. Yeah. Yeah, so I just pour hot water. Uh, another one of his many skills. Thanks a lot, Lance. Thank you, guys.